we are going to cover the extracellular matrix. So we've covered everything inside the cell, right? Nucleus, Golgi, ER, smooth ER, rough ER, ribosomes, <coughs> plasma membrane, brief structure of it. We'll get more into that for chapter five. Now, uh, cytoskeleton, and now we're going to touch on the stuff that's outside the cell. Because what's outside the cell does, does, in fact, control what happens inside the cell. Okay? So, extracellular components and how cells communicate between each other. All right? So, how cells are connected to one another determines their function and their behavior. And this works together to coordinate cellular activities. All right? Most cells do create something. They don't just sit there and are a, um, a receptacle for other signals. They actually do some type of metabolic process or they synthesize or create and secrete something. Okay? Most cells in your body secrete what's a collection of proteins right, uh, and carbohydrates that we collectively call an extra, uh, extracellular matrix. All right? So cells do this regardless of what it is, right? And they are involved in, in how cells interact with the extracellular matrix, interact or direct how cells behave, okay? So, so first off, examples. Cell wall of plants, all right? The cell wall of a plant is actually extracellular. It's outside of the plasma membrane of a plant cell, okay? And how does a cell wall direct how a, how a plant cell works or how it functions? Here's an example, okay? Here's a plant cell membrane, okay? And here's the plant cell wall. Right? Cell wall made of what? Plant cell wall is made of what? Cellulose. All right, we'll give the cell a little nucleus. We'll give it a ER, right? Big central vacuole, whatever else is in there. Okay? We'll make it a, a happy plant cell. But now, if I put that plant cell in water, what's going to happen? In pure water. Where's what's the direction of water going to be? It's going to be in, right? And what's going to happen to that plant cell wall? What's going to happen to the plant cell? It's going to swell. Is it going to burst? Why not? Because the cell wall, right? Prime example of how something outside of the cell, beyond the plasma membrane, directs the activity of the cell, all right? So it actually helps to protect the cell, in this case, from... Uh, osmotic pressure and eventually lysis of the cell in the water, right? Because this plasma membrane is going to push out. Eventually, it's going to run into the cell wall, and it's not going to be able to burst anymore. All right? And we can minimize that. All right, so prokaryotes, fungi, some protists also have cell walls. They protect this, uh, maintains its shape, prevents excess uptake of water, all right, as an example. Plant cells' walls are made up of cellulose with other embedded polysaccharides and protein. All right? Plant cell walls, some plants and most cell walls have multiple layers. All right? You have your primary cell wall, which is relatively thin. The middle lamella, or lamella, depending on if you put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Okay? It's a thin layer between primary walls of adjacent cells, all right? So we have primary wall of each cell, and then you have another wall in between it, or another layer. That's the middle lamella. And your secondary cell wall, which is in some cells, not in all, it's added between the plasma membrane and the primary cell wall, all right? So you have, if we were to draw it out, primary cell wall. So here's one cell, plasma membrane. All right, cell wall, primary cell wall relatively thin. 
your middle lamella between adjacent cell walls, and then you end up with another one, and then a plasma membrane. Okay? So you would have cell, cell, primary cell wall in blue, right, which is relatively thin, and then your the middle lamella, which is the thick layer. Right? I'm not drawing the secondary cell wall because that is not present in all cells, but it would be between um, the plasma, another layer in here, somewhere in between. Okay? These differ depending upon the organism you're, you're talking about. Prokaryotes would be much different than, let's, there we go. Prokaryotic cell walls are much different in configuration and in what constitutes a cell wall, right? Not all cell walls are made up of cellulose, right? There depends upon plant cells versus other cells, etc. cetera, all right? In some cases, and in most cases, there are channels that run through these cell walls, all right? Because otherwise, this cell, cell A and cell B, are separated by several layers of polysaccharides and boundaries, right? You're looking at least three layers, their own cell wall, the middle cell, the middle lamella, and then the cell wall of the adjacent cell, okay? So, but cells are not isolated like this. They need to communicate to one another. In order to do so, they produce channels or holes, what we call plasmodesmata, that run through these cell walls. So if I were to take, for instance, it'd be like, I can't erase it. It would be like a tunnel that runs through here. So now that part of the cell wall has a tunnel that allows the movement of materials, whatever secreted from cell B can go to cell A. Whatever secreted from cell A can go to cell B. All right? They even can get to a point where there can be extensions of the plasma membrane that go into the plasma desmo. All right, so it's a channel between adjacent cell plants. All right, so here's your secondary cell wall, right? Pretty thick. Your primary cell wall is a little thin. And then your middle lamella, okay, between cells. And here is showing your plasmodes model, All right? So in this area, you have, you have several layers, primary, secondary cell walls, your middle lamella. And, and here you'll have a, a little bit less, and then plasma and desmata are the channels between, that run between cells. And you can actually see that the plasma membrane of those <coughs> cells is linked. So whatever is produced in this cell can <coughs> float down and get into this cell, all right? And so on and so forth, and eventually make it throughout the whole protein. Questions on plasma desmata? and cell walls. <clears throat> now, that's an example of the extracellular component of plant cells. For animal cells, the extracellular matrix, okay, animal cells don't have cell walls, right? They produce stuff that is, is secreted and it, it allows for foundation. Most animal cells need some type of contact for growth. They need to, uh, if they're not contacted to something, they die. Typically, it is this type of extracellular matrix, yeah. right? It's a bunch of proteins and polysaccharides that are configured in such a way that allows communication between, between cells and within the cell, all right? It's made up of what we call glycoproteins, called collagen. Collagen's a protein, all right? Proteoglycans. Proteo refers to what? What does proteo sound like? Protein. GLYC refers to a sugar, right? So it's a protein sugar complex. Glycoproteins is a sugar protein complex. And fibronectin is another protein, right? All of these are components of the extracellular matrix. 
depending upon the cell type, the extracellular matrix can change. Okay? And a cell has ways of detecting what's there and binding to the extracellular matrix and then influencing the activities of what's going on within the cell. All right? So you have extracellular matrix proteins bind to receptors within the membrane called integrins. Okay? So an integrin will look like this. Here's your plasma membrane, double phospholipid bilayer. I'm not going to draw out the phospholipids. And then you have an alpha unit and a beta unit of integrin. All right, and then that will be attached to whatever else is inside the cell, components of the cytoskeleton, and then also will be attached to the proteins within the extracellular matrix. It's a link between outside and inside. Okay? It uh, allows for a cell to move, to, con to contact to something, and then eventually to grow and, and give an anchoring point. All right, so here's the complex nature of it. You have collagen in purple. You have fibronectin attached to, attached to collagen. There's your plasma membrane, your integrins in a dimer, all right, usually in alpha, beta subunits. And there's something like 15 different alpha units and 12 different beta units, and they can be you know, alpha 5, beta 3, alpha 3, beta 1. They have different... Um, Connections, depending upon the dimer that's there, tells what it can bind to. Some, depending if it's alpha 5, beta 3, it can bind to fibronectin. If it's alpha 3, beta 1, it can bind to collagen. All right? Example, that's, you don't have to know that. Those are just examples. The di whatever dimer is there depends upon the specificity of the binding. Okay? Then you have... These other polysaccharide molecules looks like green seaweed trees up there, right? It is a polysaccharide. There's a certain core unit, which is a, a polysaccharide, and then proteins are bound to that, and they're arranged in 90-degree um, angles, right? So you have your polysaccharide core unit, and then you have the core proteins that are attached to the polysaccharide molecule off that. Altogether, that's called a proteoglycan, a mix of proteins and sugars. How, are, how is the extracellular matrix set with all this different from like the microtubules? And Good question. Microtubules, intermediate filaments, and actin are all intracellular. Okay. Difference being outside, inside. Okay. Cytoskeleton <coughs> is all framework of proteins that are within the cell give the cell structure. Now, this is outside. It's sugars and proteins that are outside of the cell that the cell can anchor to. Okay? No. All right, just another. This is, here you can see the difference. All right? Here are the connections. All right? Integrins are the link between outside and inside. All right, and there are other proteins that fit that bill, okay? So you have extracellular matrix, which is outside of the cell. Proteins have to, are present. Membrane proteins, proteins within the membrane, bind to that extracellular matrix, and then also bind to proteins, elements of the cytoskeleton within the cell, all right? So here you have the microfilaments, all right? The microfilaments are composed of what? Actin, all right, so actin microfilaments, you could have intermediate filaments, you could have microtubules that all bind to the cytoplasmic region or the cytoplasmic domain of the integrin proteins, all right, so integrins are versatile. They have an extracellular domain, all right, an area which will bind outside of the cell, and then they have intracellular domain, an area that binds to something inside the cell. Intracellularly, they bind to elements of the cytoskeleton and other various signaling molecules. Outside, they, bi they bind to proteins and proteoglycans of the extracellular matrix. Questions on the extracellular, other questions on the extracellular matrix? All right, it is what the cells are attached to outside, okay? 
beyond the cell. <clears throat> now, cells, like I said, with plasmodesmata, and that we're going to get into plasmodesmata a little bit more, talked about them as a, being a channel between something outside the cell, a channel between the cell wall. It allows for communication between cells. Animal cells have connections as well. So, and they have junctions between cells. All right? These junctions allow for communication and allow for two cells or a group of cells to provide a certain function. Okay? Three, we have three types, well, really four types of intracellular junctions. We've already talked about plasmodesmata, so that's plant-specific. All right, it's a channel between the cell wall, allows communication between two cells. All right, we're going to talk about tight junctions and desmosomes and gap junctions. All right, gap junctions are easy because you've already learned about plasmodesmata, right? It's a hole between the cell wall, allows two cells to communicate. A gap junction is almost the same thing, it's a hole between two plasma membranes in animal cells that allows two cells to communicate. All right, so we're going to draw all these out. So here's our epithelial cell. These are very common in epithelial tissue, all right, in epithelial cells, a type of tissue found in animals. All right, so here's our, our cells. Here's our happy nucleus, okay? The first one, we're going to, all these junctions are connections or, and interactions between plasma membrane proteins between two cells. All right, so we have to have a protein here and a protein there. All right, and they will interact, and they're going to, they're going to stay together, and they're going to do so, something. Okay? First, tight junctions. They end up pinching together parts of the cell membrane. Okay? So these two proteins will interact... And now, this plasma membrane, all right, will be like that. And here's your membrane protein, okay? And that continues out the whole length of the cell. Say so if we do, draw the cell in three dimensions like this, okay? That continues the whole length of the cell, okay? so that there is now no way anything can, can pass from this side to this side of the cell between the cells. Now these two cells are held together as a functional unit. Okay? Now if I... To, so they're now together. They've, they've been zippered together at the plasma membrane. Now nothing can, can pass between or adjacent between the two cells, okay? If I continued out this layer of cells by adding more cells by tight junctions, what does that give me? What does that give you? It gives you a tissue, tissue that functions as what? As a unit, and I've effectively made a barrier between outside and, and inside. Okay? This is how epithelial tissues produce their barrier. There's a difference between outside and inside. One side of the cell versus the other side of the cell. And nothing can pass between the cells. So now this tissue, this group of cells together, can regulate what goes in and what goes out. This is what's occurring right now as you sit there digesting your lunch, absorbing nutrients. Okay, your small intestine is lined by this type of epithelial tissue, prevents things from moving across, all right? So now that selective permeability of the plasma membrane of all these cells looked together give you the ability to absorb certain nutrients and not absor absorb others, all right? Collection of that, okay? Now that's all well and good. That's a functional junction, okay? We also have junctions that allow for strength because these cells are functionally linked together. 
they should also be structurally linked together. All right? A structural linkage between the two is what we call a desmosome. All right? A desmosome will link this plasma membrane, these two plasma membranes together, Right, so it comes close like this. And then parts of the cytoskeleton will also be in part there. So you end up with this linkage between the two. So let a desmosome actually links the cytoskeleton of the two cells together. So now are they, because a plasma membrane linkage is kind of weak, right? And something that goes by these cells can, can break the plasma membrane together. But if I link the cytoskeleton together where there's protein throughout the whole cell, that's more of a, that's a stronger linkage. It's a structural linkage. And I do that to all the rest of the cells. Now the cells are prevented from being broken apart from one another. Okay? Desmosomes can also link to what we call a hemidesmosome. A half desmosome links the cell to an underlying tissue what we call the basal lamina. So you have another one like this. This cytoskeleton is linked to here and then linked to another tissue, collagen or something, on the extracellular matrix. Okay? So desmosomes incorporate the cytoskeleton of the cell. All right? Tight junctions, only the membrane. All right? And then you have your gap junctions, which now is a tunnel <coughs> between the two. through the plasma membrane, through the junction, so anything that's here can go through there. So it's actually a link in cytoplasm. Questions on? For the most part. So the only difference really between a plasmodesmata and a gap junction is the fact that it goes through a cell wall, okay? In your book, oh. so we go through plasmodesmata, right? Your other ones, three main. This is what they look like. All right. So here's your desmosome, an electro uh, transmission electron micrograph showing parts of the cytoskeleton that are actually incorporated into the junction. Now there, it's, a, it's a structural. It's a connection for strength, right? A tight junction forms a zipper, All right? Look at this. There's no way to go from, to go past these cells without going through the cell, All right? There's no way you can get between the cells themselves, All right? And then you have your gap junctions, All right? Which allow for, pat the little tunnels allow for passage from one cytoplas cytoplasm of one cell to the cytoplasm of another cell. Oh. The cell in total, okay? Cell functions, cellular functions arise from certain order, okay? Nucleus, uh, DNA to RNA to protein, nucleus, ER, ribosome, something out that Golgi passed out of the cell, whatever it might be, all right? We'll get into the plasma membrane in depth in chapter five and how it, that functions, all right? And then for example, up here, a macrophage. What's a macrophage? A macrophage is what a macrophage looks like. Okay? And macrophages are found throughout your body, and sometimes, depending on where they are, they become different cells. All right? So a macrophage in the bone becomes an osteoclast. A, mos a, a macrophage in the brain becomes a microglia. Okay? What they do is that they digest cellular debris and they break things down, okay? In your blood, a mac and in connective tissue throughout your body, a macrophage is also a white blood cell, okay? So this macrophage encounters a little bacteria. That looks more like a mitochondria, but whatever, okay? In order to, in order to recognize and break down that bacteria, right, from 
wherever it is, it has to, there's a whole host of cellular activities that are occurring. There's breakdown of the cytoskeleton so that it can produce a pseudopod around a philopodia around the, and ingest that bacteria. And once it's ingested, right, so it ingests the bacteria so it looks like this. Right? And here's your nucleus. Once it's ingested, what has to happen? Now we're going to produce hydrolytic enzymes that are going to be produced at, at the rough ER, incorporated into a lysosome in the Golgi. Right? A lysosome then fuses with this, with this vacuole, and then you get breakdown of the bacteria. All of that stuff is ongoing and depends upon the order of the cell itself and the organelles within the cell. All right? Questions on the whole cell and extracellular stuff as well, all right? And how cells connect and communicate, all right? You will, don't forget about these, because next, next year in anatomy physiology, you'll talk about tight junctions, gap junctions, and desmosomes again when you talk about epithelial tissue and what they do, all right? <coughs>